Very, very excited to be able to talk to our guest here in a matter of moments. It's 1140 The Bet Las Vegas. Welcome back to the Playmakers. And let's get straight to it. Joining us now is someone who covers the Cleveland Browns for ESPN and has had a slightly busy offseason, to say the least. Jake Trowder joins us. All insider calls are powered by BetQL. Bet smarter and beat the books. Download your BetQL app today or visit BetQL.com. Jake, hell of a year to cover the Browns. How are you doing, my friend? Adrian, I'm not hanging in there. It, it has been a long off season. Uh, I'm ready. I'm ready for the season to begin. Usually, I'm ready for the off season, but at this point, I'm just ready for some games because it's been crazy, really, <laughs> since like February of this year. Jake's like, please get on the field. Just please get on the field. Um, and by the way, be sure to follow Jake on Twitter too at Jake underscore Trotter. And now, there's a lot of ways to look at the news that just came out. And there's been time to kind of sit on everything with 20 of the 24 lawsuits being settled, according to Tony Busby. Now, from a Cleveland Browns perspective, what does this mean for the team? Yeah, I'm not sure it means a whole lot. It doesn't change anything for them. You know, they're still still hoping to get Deshaun Watson on the field at some point this season. And really now, I mean, I think the focus for everybody is on what the NFL is going to do. And I think the expectation, at least in Cleveland, is that an announcement, a determination of some kind is going to come down before training camp. And so, you know, may, maybe this makes it uh, – expedites it for the NFL now that 20 to 24 lawsuits are, you know, have been settled, but that's just speculation. You know, we'll have to see. The NFL did tell me in a statement that they have – you know, that the settlements are going to have no impact on what they do. So now we just kind of have to wait for the league – and begin their process of, of assessing a, a suspension if there is one at all for Watson. And in this question, I'm going to be, be, be fair because no one's – I don't think we're ever going to know for sure. But in your estimation, do you think it was the NFL in the midst of their investigation and talking to Deshaun or even the Browns that kind of, you know, gave the indication of, all right, enough's enough. Let, let's try to get these cleared? It's possible. You know, I don't know that to be the case. Uh, whether from the, 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 the Brown side or the NFL side. Um, you know, I think the timing is interesting because it looked like we were going to, to 24, potentially 26, you know, individual civil trials next year. And, you know, then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you know, we get the announcement that the 20 to 24 have been settled. So, yeah, I, I don't know what prompted Watson to reverse course because at his introductory press conference with the Browns on March 25th, he said, it was not his intent to settle any of the lawsuits. And, you know, even a, even a week ago, you know, yeah. when he was asked about whether he was open to settling, he basically answered that he was just focused on clearing his name. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know from his end what prompted the, the reversal. But, um, you know, right now he's still got four lawsuits pending. And so it is potential, you know, there is potential for four civil trials even still. Um, but, yeah, it, it definitely was in a lot of ways, the reversal from the, 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 you know, the side that he had, that the, the um, mindset he had showed really since, you know, he joined the Browns back in late March. And I want to hone in on a couple of things that you said right there, even just the timeline, but specifically, first off, I, was there any indication from Tony? Because like you said, he said Moore's on the way 25th and 26th, I thought it was going to happen this Tuesday because for some reason every Tuesday these past couple of weeks, more news is coming out. Did Tony indicate if that's still going to happen or if it's still possible for those civil lawsuits to be filed? Yeah, we've got no indication either way about the 25th or 26th civil lawsuits. They have not been filed or hadn't as of earlier today. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. Um but he has not commented further beyond his statement. And I just know to this point, 25 and 26 have not been filed. And it's unclear, uh, you know, whether they will be at this point. And uh, Jake Trouder joining us from ESPN. You you kind of mentioned, and I just I just want to straight out ask you, is, is you know, on, on one side, are you surprised that he settled? And on the flip side, do you think... Obviously, this is a polarizing situation, and there's fans of the Browns that are no longer fans, and, and rightfully so with however you feel about these allegations and the things that Deshaun's involved with. But do you think now that he settled some of these, some people might view it as an admission of guilt 
But do you think this news changes the way that some fans are going to view Deshaun? Yeah, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, just like a, you know, when a grand jury declines to indict an individual, that's not an exoneration. And uh, a settlement is not necessarily an admission of guilt either. You know, the court of public opinion can play both ways with regards to that. But, yeah, I don't, I don't think this is necessarily Deshaun Watson saying, you know, I, I, I'm admitting I did anything wrong. And he publicly has been very steadfast in, you know, denying all wrongdoing. You know, as, as for, for Browns fans, I mean, this has been a very difficult, you know, situation for them. You know, they were kind of put in this situation via the trade. Um, and, you know, I think it's been, it's been tough for a lot of them to kind of reconcile Watson playing for their favorite team. You know, a lot of Browns fans, I think, are – if they just want to see him on the field, they don't care about any of this other stuff. But there are a lot of Browns fans that do care. And I'm not sure that, you know, how these settlements are going to affect the way they think about him or the team. And with even the 20 cases that have been cleared, there's still four unsettled cases. And, and to be honest, you know, the first one, which is also the most vocal and notable one from Ashley Solis, who does not only talk to the Houston media, but took it national with her side, you know, with her side of the story on HBO. Uh, from a Browns perspective, how worried should they be that these still, you know, these four cases are still in the air, and it's possible, you know, one, two, three of these could go the wrong way for Deshaun, and how this is going to play out. Yeah, and I think it'll be interesting to see, you know, how does the NFL now adjust accordingly? Because new information could still come out, just because twenty of the lawsuits are settled, and presumably no more information will come out from those. Um, you know, that, that right now. You know, barring a settlement with the four, including uh, Ashley Solis, as you mentioned, you know, they're going to continue to go to uh, a civil trial, in which case, you know, there's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to be a very, you know, public situation. So, yeah, I mean, I think the NFL is in an in a interesting spot because, you know, that they have investigated this, uh, these, these accusations for months and months now. And, you know, I think there's a lot of pressure on the NFL to act before the start of the season. Uh, I think everybody expects them to, but, you know, they are in, in a situation where new information could come out. So how do they act accordingly? I think that's going to be fascinating to see what happens. And uh, my last question in, in terms of some of this off the field, and we'll get a couple actual football ones because eventually it's coming soon enough. But I just I just kind of want to gauge your opinion on, you know, the NFLPA came out strong and said, yo, if you guys are trying to do – in terms of a suspension, a lengthy one, and, and one we haven't seen before, we're going to call you guys out on whether it's Robert Kraft or Jerry Jones or Daniel Snyder. In your opinion, do you think that was the NFLPA kind of calling out the NFL's bluff, or are they very serious that we can get litigious and, and we'll defend Deshaun if we need to? I mean, they've given every indication that they're going to you know fight on Watson's behalf in this particular situation. I do think it's interesting you know, the posture they're taking is, you know, to, to you know, in, in, and I think in their eyes, point out, you know, potential hypocrisies between the way owners are treated and the way, at least in this case, a player is treated. I do think it's interesting they're not really necessarily trying to defend anything that Watson is accused of. Um, I think they're just, looks like they're going to try to point out proportionality, um, which will hinge on what the NFL, you know, does. Like if the NFL comes down with a year-long suspension, I think definitely they will say, well, you know, you're punishing a player. Um, you know, these owner have these owners have, have been accused of things, and you know they haven't really been dealt with in a you know in a, in a comparable way. So yeah, I think the NFLPA is geared up for a fight, and it'll be interesting to see if that has any effect on the amount of games Watson ultimately plays in 2022. And this roster that's been assembled, you know, pending Deshaun and Jacoby Brissett, whoever's going to be the QB, in your estimation, is this Cleveland Browns roster a Super Bowl? contending caliber roster right now just depends if deshaun watson plays um and i think you know if he gets suspended eight games let's say you know they would be a, a dangerous team in the playoffs if they could get there you know if jacoby Brissett could hold serve but i i think if it's if watson is suspended 10 or more games you're looking at the potential of a lost lost season you know barring something unforeseen in terms of another quarterback trade, you know, like a Baker Mayfield for Jimmy Garoppolo, something like that to kind of, um, you know, hold serve while he's out. Um, but I, I think otherwise it would be very difficult for the Browns to make the playoffs because the AFC 
as you know, in Las Vegas, is just absolutely loaded, particularly the AFC West, but also the North and even the AFC East as well. It's a really tough conference, and you know, you, you can't give away many games and, and overcome it, no, no matter how talented you are around the quarterback. Jake, uh, you don't know this, but behind the scenes, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You just cost me 20 bucks because I promised my PD the name Baker Mayfield wouldn't be said in the interview, and that's okay. <laughs> um, but you brought up, yes, uh, it is the wild, wild west out here. And, you know, to let you know over here in Vegas, I feel like a lot of the Raiders fans are enjoying kind of being the underdog because our QB isn't as, as flashy as Russell or it doesn't have the hair that uh, that Herbert has or the success of the Chiefs. But how do you see the Raiders this year? And obviously picking up Devontae Adams and and being in, quite frankly, the toughest division in football. Yeah, I mean, I think they got a shot to make the playoffs. I mean, obviously it's tough in that division, right? Because you're dealing with three playoff caliber teams. You got to, you know, face twice. So, you know, is that going to affect their record, you know, in terms of getting in as a wild card? But I mean, just the team itself, you know, I know, you know, watch, you know, being at that game last year in Cleveland, and, and I know the Browns had a depleted roster. Um, but, you know, Carr is so impressive in, in clutch moments. Um, they're going to have the weapons this year that they didn't have previously. And defensively, you know, they can get after it as, as well. So I, I think the Raiders should not be a team that's written off at all in terms of the playoff conversation. Um, you know, if they were in any other division, you know, they would be, you know, almost a fringe lock. But even so, I think that, that they're going to have their say in the AFC. And it would not stun me, despite playing in that division, if they're in the playoffs at the end of the year. There it is, Jake Trowder joining us. A busy, busy man this offseason with the Cleveland Browns, to say the least. Jake Trowder from ESPN. Jake, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Adrian. Take care. You too. Bye-bye, Jake. That is Jake Trotter from ESPN. Be sure to follow him on Twitter at Jake underscore Trotter. The Playmakers continue. It's 1140 The Bet.